Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live broadcast from True Fire Studios. You probably don't even need to be watching the screen to know Robin Ford is back in the studio. We've done something really special this week, haven't we? Indeed. Jazz Revolution. Yes. So, you know, uh, most of your fans, of course, um, have an appreciation for your, you know, your jazz influences, some of the things you've done in the past. But there may be some of the younger fans out there that don't really fully appreciate that history. Uh -huh. Talk about, you know, your jazz thing. Well, having begun primarily as a blues guitar player, you know, mm -hmm. uh, inspired by the late, great Michael Bloomfield, and then, of course, right around the same time and in kind of quick succession, Eric Clapton showed up on the scene in the United States via John Mayall and the Blues Breakers and then Cream, mm -hmm. and uh, then, of course, Hendrix. Uh, and I lived very near San Francisco, so I used to see these people play live all the time and was introduced in going to hear Bloomfield to hearing B.B. King mm -hmm. or going to hear uh, Hendrix, I was exposed to Albert King, right? Mm -hmm. So all, the, all this blues influence was happening. But just being a, uh, musically inclined, being curious about music and having grown up on a variety of types of music, as a kid, uh, I, I just became more and more interested in jazz and wanted to know what it was about. Mm -hmm. So I started buying any record that had a saxophone on the cover. Really? <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know the guy who he was, <laughs> you know, and it turned out to be Ornette Coleman, you uh, know, yeah. Archie Shep. Yeah. But uh, also my older brother Patrick was, was buying jazz and another friend of mine uh, who was a little older and a pianist uh, turned me on to some things. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, you know, my ear gravitated towards it. I liked the style. And, uh, you know, realizing that I had no idea how to play this music, I bought a book on chords. Mickey Baker. Mickey Baker's yeah. Jazz Volume 1. Yeah. And then knowing the chords but not knowing what to play over the chords, mm -hmm. I bought another book where I learned uh, the uh, basic, you know, scales, you know, major, minor, melodic, minor, mm -hmm. altered uh, scales, and, you know, started applying them to... Uh, the chords that I was playing. So, you know, your ear um, needs to be able to tell the difference. <laughs> this scale over that chord, you know, no one was quite telling me that. Right. But I could play it and go, oh, okay, I hear that, you know. So it's always been a, a real uh, important thing to me to be uh, using my ears to inform me. You know, I get outside information, but it's my ears that tell me what's right, what's wrong, mm -hmm. you know. And so the way I play is a combination of very fundamental blues playing uh, with this melodic, excuse me, this harmonic information that I learned out of books. And I, I've applied that uh, extra knowledge as a guitarist in the same way that I applied myself to the pentatonic scale. I just played it. Mm -hmm. So you worked with Miles Davis mm. very notably. How how did that come about for a young blues player? Well, indeed, uh, earlier uh, than that, quite a bit earlier than that, uh, I I was already kind of starting to bring this jazz influence into my playing. Uh, a little bit with Jimmy Witherspoon, which mm -hmm. was, you know, I mean, I joined him, I was 20. Um, and we were playing fundamentally blues, but Spoon, you know, his first uh, apparently live uh, singing live gig was with Count Basie. So, you know, the jazz thing was there. Mm -hmm. um, but I started trying to write modal music. And um, so uh, my actual first... Um, released under my own name was called The Inside Story. And that was with a group that I put together with Russell Fronte, which went on to become the Yellow Jackets. Mm. So that was already going on, you know, in my late 20s. Okay. Uh, I had already 
also worked with Tom Scott and the LA Express with Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. I knew enough, you mm -hmm. know, to be able to play with those guys because their music was pretty much R and B based. Right. You know, it was like the Jazz Crusaders. You right. Know? They weren't exactly. playing giant steps. You exactly. Know? So uh, it was in my wheelhouse well enough. Uh, the Yellow Jackets, you know, that band was actually more challenging. I mean, I was a part of the development of that group. But that's, you know, we started actually trying to play a lot more through chord changes and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was exercising, you know, that chop in, in my late 20s, certainly. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to Miles Davis, uh, you know, the, my playing had evolved quite a bit. Um, that was uh, via the producer of the Yellow Jackets, who uh, was producing Miles Davis. Uh, Miles was looking for a new guitar player, and he asked Tommy LaPuma, mm -hmm. again, who signed the Yellow Jackets to Warner Brothers, you know, who he thought I might be good for him. Mm -hmm. And Tommy recommended me. So I wound up playing with Miles. And by this time, I'd already kind of gone full circle back to playing rhythm and blues and blues again. Yeah. But I had the n harmonic knowledge. Yeah. His music, no chord changes, man. There were chord changes behind the melodies, but mm -hmm. once you started playing, yeah, one chord. Really? Yeah, so <laughs> didn't have to know a lot. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, but did, did, did you learn a lot from him? You know, I, I can honestly say that I had pretty much <clears throat> learned all the lessons. Mm -hmm. I had been listening to Miles Davis for, you know, a lot for mm -hmm. a good 20 years by the time I got there, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and considered him, you know, potentially, you know, my most important influence because of his combination of uh, soulfulness, sound, uh, a melodic approach and and blues playing. You know, Miles was never the guy, you know, that he was never the uh, the changes the hip changes player uh -huh. guy, I don't think he was ever that guy. Mm -hmm. He was much more a stylist, you know, and that's what I consider myself basically a stylist. Exactly. That's style. <laughs> I present my style. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> As opposed to uh, you know, people who can, you know, play a whole lot more than I can. So let's talk about um, this week. You know, this is a project we had talked about for the last few years, but it, it wasn't the right timing. There were other things we needed to do mm -hmm. um, in your library. And, um, and f finally, we got to focus on, you know, what you're calling jazz revolution. Yeah. Just briefly describe what you're doing in this course. We're playing, uh, well, I'm playing primarily... Uh, songs from a new record that I produced on uh, myself and Bill Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, that record will probably come out in July. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a title for it, but Bill and I did one other record earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be our second. Now, Bill also played with Miles. Did, did, did you guys play together at any point with no, Miles? No. not with Miles. Okay. No. I have toured with Bill. Yeah. And uh, we co billed in New York at uh, the Blue Note New York. We did yeah. co bill there. But, um, yeah, Bill was the first tenor play to player to play with Miles mm -hmm. after he came out of retirement. Mm -hmm. So you guys, uh, I, I know you've toured. You've just, uh, the record's not out yet, right? Is the record out? The newest one? The newest one with Bill. No. Okay. July, I hope. And don't mention, don't mention the name of your label because that's our trivia question for the day, okay? Okay. Don't mention the name. All right. We'll get to that, though. Okay. But, so go on. So we're working with tracks from the new album yeah i recut the five songs that i had uh written for the record yeah uh with our good friends west little on drums and brian allen yeah bassist uh, and um that's what we're using for half of the course okay uh the other five pieces there will be ten mm -hmm. the other five are a combination of uh Two other songs that I wrote, one actually being an arrangement mm -hmm. on a traditional, and uh, three other things that are um, basically just a series of four, five chords to play over mm -hmm. that I pulled from uh, solos on other records. 
Okay. Which uh, I think I can mention, right? Sure. Uh, the, uh, the keyboard solo from a song called um, Magic Sam off my first real solo album called mm -hmm. The Inside Story. Yeah. Uh, I, I um, used those chords that were played under the keyboard solo. Uh, also, the chord progression from Imperial Strut. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those things that really put Russell Ferrante on the map with the yellow jackets. Yeah. But these were the chords that were under my solo mm -hmm. on that. And um, that's about, that's all I can remember. <laughs> no worry. Why don't we take Stanley mm -hmm. and you can choose if you want to play, perform first, and then teach us just a little something from it mm -hmm. or show us something first and then apply it. I what think would playing it would be best. Okay, cool. And then talking. All right. This is Stanley off of the new course, Jazz Revolution.
I got into <laughs> trouble there. Oh, I don't think any, <laughs> anybody was I actually watching. Stu- I started soloing over the melody, which was a big mistake. I don't think anybody caught that, Robin, except you. I hope not. Um, but um, quick shout out. Uh, Jeff Macrolane is on the A train in New York City listening and watching. Oh, and fantastic. Says hello to you. Hey, uh, Jeff. Robin just recently produced uh, Jeff Macrolane's latest CD called Now. Now. And it's killer. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, Josh Smith. You know Josh Smith? Sure, of course. Uh, big fan of yours. You know, a, a, great guitar a, a, player. A, a, a great guitar player. Another true fire artist. He has a quick question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to know what is the what's the first jazz head you ever learned? Can you remember that? The first head. First jazz head I ever learned. Um, hmm. It might be uh, Oh Provo by Charlie Parker. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> there, there you go, Josh. Um, Josh, what was the first jazz head you ever learned? Let's see if he can remember that. Um, let's do some shout outs. You've got a lot of fans online. Uh, and guys, we appreciate all the thumbs ups, all the great questions. We'll, we'll try to get Robin to answer all of your questions. Just list them in, in the chat feed. Um, but you've got fans from Italy, Switzerland, Argentina, Sweden, all, all tuned in live right now. Sweden, uh, New York City, Michigan, Guatemala, Yorkshire, Tampa, Dallas, Calgary, Armenia. Thank you so much. The Isle of Man, San Francisco, Slovenia, Mal- Mallorca, Aero Grande, Montreal, Uruguay, Norway, New Hampshire, Virginia, France, El Monte, Cologne, Germany, Texas, Netherlands, London, Peru, Manchester, Belgrade, Serbia, Nashville, of course, uh, Cheltenham, UK, Austria, Las Vegas, Arkansas, Brazil, Morocco, Puglia, Italy, Mauritius, Canada, Belgium, Portugal, Croatia, Romania, and New Zealand. Crazy. (laughs) Right? Amazing. We couldn't do this 10 nah. years ago, could we? No, I don't think so. Just this little gathering of folks in every time All zone, over the every world. content. Incredible. It's, it's crazy. Man. It is. Um, oh, Josh says Bloom Dito by Charlie Parker. We both learned <laughs> Charlie Parker tunes. Crazy. <laughs> um, so let's, um, you know, I kind of was, I had to shout out before Jeff gets off the A train. Mm-hmm. So let's skip over to Strutnik. Yeah. And, and we'll do a little lesson after you play that, okay? You don't want to do this one I just played? Well, can you remember what you just did there? Oh, uh, there was just one little thing I. Show them. Kind of, yeah. Like, what uh, is um, to me uh, the most salient aspect of. of <laughs> This particular thing is it's just a series of minor minor seventh chords. The melody. Just having a song built on minor seventh chords moving around like that. This is something I do a lot, you know, like take one particular little aspect and um and just use it all over the place, move it around, things like that. This is something we go into in depth in the course. So yeah, this this course, Tommy, how how much content is in this course? This course is massive. It's probably four hours or more. We were going to do two courses during this week, but decided to really focus and dive deep here. Yeah. <clears throat> and I will One. say this. I have to say this. You probably noticed on the other side of the glass. Robin, a lot of traffic in and out, a lot of traffic in and out. Um, always a testament to that there's something really, really happening here oh, cool. in the studio. Thank you. And, um, you know, speaking on behalf of my fellow kind of blues rock students of guitar who want to jazz up their blues and jazz up their rock and, and thus, mm-hmm. you know, s- s- study with all of your courses. This course offers like a wealth of information, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that you're talking about. Yeah. Y- you know, whether you want to learn these tunes, we're, of course, we're going to transcribe everything. You're going to have tab and notation sync to the video, can slow it down, but everything will be transcribed and you can pull out, I- I'm telling you, you can spend the rest of your life digging deep into this course. So Robin really does dive deep. 
and we're going to try to do as much playing as possible so you can get a, a, a really good flavor for, uh, you know, a Robbins curriculum. Strutnik, talk a little bit about that, and then we'll roll a track. And sure. Strutnik uh, is basically just a series of chords, and it's the uh, chord progression from uh, the solo that I took on the original Yellow Jackets recording of uh, Imperial Strut, a mm -hmm. Russell Ferrante composition. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, like five chords looped and uh, gives me an opportunity to kind of apply the quote jazz bebop kind of mm -hmm. thing that I do with love. So is it like <laughs> a five chord progression or? It's just a, a, a series of uh, chords that are, that are repeated, okay. and there are literally five chord voicings. Well, not voicings, but five chords okay. that just keep circulating. Cool. Tommy? <laughs> Teach us something Thanks from that. back memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Show yeah. us anything from that. Well, um, something I kind of gravitate towards is chord progressions that allow you to play straight up blues almost uh, through the whole thing if you like. This is basically... All B minor seven. You can play that B minor pentatonic through all of this. But when you get that one chord right there, you kind of want to go. Mixolydian, the key of F. But this chord, then the altered chord here, the B flat minor, E flat 9, E flat 13. You can kind of just play the blues straight through. And again, this shows up a lot in my playing. Uh -huh. You'll hear chord changes, yeah. but you'll hear a, a lot of <laughs> blues playing too. And... Uh, 
then there will be that occasional altered chord that you can uh, add a little spice to before returning to your blues playing. Cool. Um, so, a couple of questions for you, but first, um, a, a little housekeeping. There, underneath the video, is uh, there's a few links. Um, you can save for the next 48, 48 hours using the promo code Robin Live. You can pre order this course that we're previewing today. Mm -hmm. It's available for pre order right now, or any some or all of Robin's other True Fire courses. Load your basket up. You got 48, 48 hours. Apply that code. You're good to go. Save some bucks. Uh, the trivia question for mm -hmm. today is, what is the name of Robin Ford's recently launched Nashville-based record label? Ah. Name that label. My label. Don't answer it in the thread. We're going to redact it. We're going to cross it out. We're going to delete it. Because you're going to give away the answer uh, to everyone else and, and lower your chance of winning a $100 gift card. We'll choose somebody. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. A $100 oh. gift card. Um, also, by the way, whether you answer it, uh, incorrectly or correctly, we're going to give everyone that participates in the trivia thing 50 more uh, giveaway uh, entries in our whole lot of love giveaway. We're giving away a PRS guitar. Um, so click the link, answer it, um, and, uh, and good luck. A um, couple of questions. Um, after Rock Radio says, Robin's best, in his opinion, Best, I have a different opinion, but I agree with this opinion as well. Robin's best jazz fusion solo is on Yellow Jacket's tune called Mammoth College Fight Song. You remember that? Oh, sure. <clears throat> um, do, does, uh, he wants to know if anything in the course you know, kind of covers your approaches on that solo. Uh, I would say yes, um, because really you know, you're kind of using the same information. No matter what it is you're playing, uh, you've got a chord, you've got a scale. Mm -hmm. uh, Monmouth College Fight Song has kind of a couple of key changes in there. Um, but like many pieces of music, that even though they're, they, they might sound complex, there are fundamental things running through it. Like Revelation, it's a, a song that a lot of people identify with me. It was written by Russell Ferrante. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those songs where you get these chord changes happening, but you can play the blues kind of through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is my chop. <laughs> 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 this is my chop. And then here's this altered chord, you know, here and there. I wish I could exactly remember Monmouth. I do, but I can't really think about it and talk mm -hmm. at the same time too much. <laughs> it's funny you mention Revelation because that would be, that's, that was, for me, one of the seminal Robin Ford. And the solo, uh, absolutely incredible, but it was the chord changes that, for me, mm -hmm. when I heard that and bought, it was on a, um, I, I forget the medium. It was an older medium, though, mm -hmm. in a big box. There was a book. It was tabbed out. Really? Learning those chord changes was, uh -huh. for me, yeah. very much like how the Mickey Baker chord book must have like opened your eyes up to, right. you know, yeah. other chord voicings and getting that jazz sound. Just yeah. brilliant. Basically, uh, that song kind of demonstrates all of that stuff. Man, it's yeah. just killer. Kind of very gospel -y, that song, too, time, right? Yeah. And to hear those kind of gospel -y sounding chords and chord changes from a guitar, it was just... You know, I think it's a seminal recording for any student of guitar. That's a good record. Oh, man, killer. Uh, Edward Johns, question for Robin. This is a good one, man. I've, I've actually never asked you this myself. Of all the areas of music and theory you have not mastered, what would be the one you'd most like to learn if you could dedicate another few thousand hours to it? Yeah, Indian music. Indian music. For sure. Love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, that is the highest form of music that's ever manifested on the really? planet Earth. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, there's nothing as deep, as wide, as high, you know. I mean, these people, they, 
they're playing for God, man, you know? They they're are. playing to become God, but yeah. in a non-ego way. Yeah. You know, it's not about, you know, uh, becoming, you know, famous <laughs> yeah. no, it's type not. of God. No, man. <laughs> you know, rock God, whatever. I, <laughs> yeah, it's that music is... Very soulful, mm. spiritual music. Mm. We had Tommy, who in, in, in did you help me with the name of the sitar player we had in here? His name is... I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he came in here, mm -hmm. I think with Fareed Haq, mm. and um, gave us uh, explained ragas, you know, different notes going up then mm -hmm. coming down. Yep. And the spiritual kind of vibe that those kind of, it's like their scales in a way, I guess you could relate to it in some way. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. So um, I, w I would love for you to take a one year vacation in India then. Not now. Yeah. It's a little dangerous right now. Not the time. But uh, maybe you'll get a chance. Um, let's do another tune, man. How about Little Boxer? Okay. I can say a little bit about this in front. Okay, perhaps. please. please. And it's kind of a holistic uh, approach to a piece of music. In other words, uh, there's no, you know, with, with other things in the chorus, we put rhythm guitar behind my solos. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, in, in this one, it's just kind of like, it's both rhythm and melody and solo all at once. And it was inspired by um, a piece of music by Miles Davis called Yester Now, which is from tribute to Jack Johnson, mm. the famous heavyweight champ who was an idol for Miles Davis. And uh, Miles used to study boxing. You know, he got into studying boxing. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so Miles is the little boxer. This is called the little boxer. Okay, cool, man. <laughs>
Show us anything from that. God, I was <laughs> running into trouble there. Uh, I don't think but, so. Uh, <laughs> this chord. I'm playing uh, probably hard for people to kind of see that, but basically it's like and uh, there's a series of chords. having a lot of sonic issues that, um, you know, once again, it's like I'm playing something really simple using one chord voicing to play a lot of things, you know? That's B flat 6, A6, G6, D major triad with the third and the root, minor 7 chord, minor 7 chord. like uh, A major 7, G major 7, F sharp major 7, and then this series. I really just enjoy getting a lot of music out of one chord voicing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> perfect segue into a question we have here from... Uh, Richard wants to know what what is your favorite chord? I know there's no favorite, favorite chord, but yeah. you know what's a chord that you really dig? Yeah, you're and you love chords. You've said that a hundred times. Oh before. yeah, chords are everything. Show us a favorite chord. Well, every time I pick up a guitar, I play G minor eleven. I don't know why. It's just it's got the open strings. Yeah. It's minor. a song called Nazareth. Yeah. Just out of my love for that chord, that's where it started. <laughs> there you, know? you go. What an answer. So that is probably my favorite chord. And I like this voicing. Like for a minor chord, minor, minor nine. You can move it around. It's like, um, my favorite things, the opening vamp to my Beautiful. favorite things. Yeah. It's like a minor 11 chord. Now it's a major 11 chord. <laughs> I just think it's, it's a very versatile uh, voicing. Awesome. Uh, another question to do with chords, and um, from Tom Houghton Guitar, and uh, and I'm really glad you asked this question because I, I love the answer to this question. To talk about your modal chord voicing, so I, and I believe you you did a section on it in our first course together, in Blues Revolution, mm -hmm. um, the chordal harmony chords, the chordal chords, the Miles Davis thing. Oh. Do you remember that? Well, the Miles Davis thing is not modal, um, so they're kind of two different things. Show them both, then. Okay. Well, the Miles Davis thing, which is incredibly hip, and uh, he must have... He may or may not have been the person who came up with... To, who just found this, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, he was very close with Gil Evans, and Gil Evans might have had something to do with it, mm -hmm. you know? Or, or even perhaps Wayne Shorter. But um, it was a device that was, you know, occurring in the keyboards that I didn't, I had, didn't, didn't understand. And 
I asked the keyboard player, you know, what it was he was playing, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, well, this is what Miles said he wanted behind him, <laughs> what what to be happening behind him, uh -huh. and so basically it's it's just um, for instance, in if we were to call it the key of E, and we played that open G voicing that with an E in the root, drop the lower two down a half step. So that becomes from a major triad to a series of fourths. Um, and then move that with the pentatonic scale. I hope people can hear that this is the pentatonic scale. I'm just starting on the fifth because that's where that major triad is. A third of G on top. Down a whole step. Down a minor third. Whoops. A whole step. So D da 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 da. And then you can fool around with those fours. So that was the Miles Davis thing. Nice. So do the modal chords then. Yes. Well, I'm not exactly sure what to say about that. I mean, basically, it's a, you know, it's, we're talking about kind of a lesson in the modes, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And basically the modes are just uh, taking the C major scale, for instance, and you just pick a different note from the C major scale as you're starting an ending point. So mm -hmm. instead of starting from C and ending at C, mm -hmm. do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, you start on re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re. Mm -hmm. As your root note, all the notes remain the same. All the triads remain the same. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, th that's a simple Great. explanation. So Tom Houghton, who asked that question, uh, just responded, this is gold. So <laughs> Tom, if you liked the, the chords that Robin showed you, as I do, um, there's a nice thick section on that in your first two far chorus, Blues Revolution. Uh-huh. Um, uh, another quick question, then we'll do some playing. Um, I, 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 this is a great question. From your perspective, because you came up playing the blues, Gail and Jacqueline wants to know, if you're a blues and rock guitarist, what's a good way to begin transitioning into playing jazz? Well, I can only tell you how I did it. And um, I, in fact, now have a... Uh, we're going to talk a about channel, that, too. channel uh, hosted by True Fire. How did you do it? And then let's talk about that okay. channel. So I mm. remember very vividly being on a bandstand playing with a group, and I was probably 19. Uh, and I realized just epiphany, you know. I don't know any chords. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I like to say I, I knew the cowboy chords. I knew how to play a ninth chord, and I knew how to play bar chords, just seventh chords, you know. But I certainly didn't know how to play a 13th or a minor 7 flat 5 or a 13 flat 9 chord, you know. So I got a book. I got the Mickey Baker book, uh, Mickey Baker Jazz Volume 1, and um, I learned all the chords out of that book and some of the ways in which he presented them, how to play them. And then I took those things and I applied them uh, uh, to the gig I was playing at the time with Charlie Musselwhite, the blues harmonica player. We were playing Chicago blues. And all of those chord voicings, I was very uh, able to just fit right into this 12-bar blues. Mm -hmm. So all, uh, all that's contained within jazz mm -hmm. can, you know, uh, exist within a 12-bar blues. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all there, all the possibilities. So I learned all the chords out of the book, and then 
I didn't know what to play on a 13 flat nine chord, so mm -hmm. I got another book <laughs> and I learned the scales. Uh -huh. And then I always like to tell people, I just applied my s the, that to, um, to my playing in the same way that I'd applied, you know, um, a minor pentatonic scale to a blues. I just played the notes. I just kept playing the notes. As long as I didn't hit a wrong note, I was cool. So I'm playing a, you know, the diminished scale, and I'm just making at the right time and just making sure I don't hit any bad notes. Kept applying it, kept applying it, still applying it, and started finding ways to make it musical by doing so. So let's talk about this channel. So uh, many of you, if you're a True Fire student, you know that we've just introduced, officially introduced, uh, True Fire channels, uh, which allow artists to do whatever it is that they want to do. They upload their own self-produced video. They organize it any way they like. They establish their own themes. It's kind of their joint on True Fire, right? Yeah, And we need these great tools. And so, you know... Robin just launched his channel named. Uh, it's called, well, it's the Robin Ford Guitar Dojo channel. Guitar, the way I learned it. And don't, uh, don't be misled into thinking this is you're going to learn. This is not a beginner's course. There's a section called Ooh, beginners. No, I have a beginner's <laughs> course, Brad. You do, but I'm telling you, you're, you don't teach people how to tune the guitar. You, oh, no. You, no. Okay, That's so it somebody is, else's job. <laughs> I will tell you <laughs> that um, right from the get go, you're going to learn some unbelievable stuff. And then once you get into the second section, which is you call it intermediate it, or yeah, something. Yeah, I have beginner's course and intermediate course. Right. Yeah. So um, it's a progression. Robin, it, it literally shows you how he learned to play like he plays today. It's yeah. killer. Um, a subscription to it has been fast and furious. Uh, you're, you know, it's fifteen dollars a month as sort of an introductory price. Mm -hmm. It's uh, if you subscribe now, you will be grandfathered in. I know. Ultimately, maybe sooner rather than later. Uh, you know the the you know the the price will be <laughs> increased. Okay. And rightfully so. Inflation. This, this stuff is gold, and I will tell you, there's nothing in our library anywhere or anywhere, anywhere like <laughs> this course. I love this thing. Thank you. I'm a subscriber. I'm studying it. All right. Um, I, I thought I was beyond beginner, but I'm working on a lot of the beginner stuff, to tell you the truth. There's just <laughs> gold there, right? Um, great review, great understanding of the underlying foundation of how Robin Ford mm -hmm. plays guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do another tune. How about Sentimental Mode? Sentimental Mode. That's right. This song is written uh, based upon the Phrygian mode. And I'd never done anything like this. I'd never written anything with, like, a mode in mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, like, whenever I'm looking for inspiration to write, I, I look for something like that, you know? It's not like... Yeah, I mean, instrumental music, there's, it's not like there's an experience that you're writing about like you might with a, a song containing lyrics, you know? So I give myself uh, an assignment, you know, as I like to say. <laughs> cool. Like, write something in the Phrygian mode. Okay. <laughs> so now I have my job set out for me. <laughs> Shall we? Let's. Again, okay, because that the delay is just so loud. Thank you. Sorry, man.
Beautiful man, it's this is this course is so chock full of information. It's crazy, and the playing's great. And of course, you get all the tracks uh, to work with on your own. Yeah, and these are some of the better. I would say these are probably the best recorded tracks yeah, for killer. me to play to that we've done yet. Yeah. Uh, everything transcribed. Um, also, you have the, the, all the true fire tools. You can loop any section. You can slow down any section without changing the pitch. Wish we had these tools when we were coming up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've, I've got more questions for you, but a lot of questions about the channel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, you, you, n number one, it's fifteen dollars a month. If yeah. you dig it, you stay subscribed. If you the don't dig lessons. it, you know. <laughs> d d d uh, someone's asking if uh, you're interacting, and yes, you, you know, it's not a private lesson, but Robin is present. He's interacting with the student body. Um, he's releasing ev every. What's the interval where you every release every week? An, every Monday, we release a new beginner and a new intermediate. Uh, lesson. So um, plenty to keep you busy, that's yeah. for sure. And um, hey, Tommy, can you get somebody to just do like a screenshot here? Stream live the channel page so that they recognize it. If you go to True Fire on the top nav bar, you'll see, you know, courses and educators, and you'll th see a thing called channels. Look in the directory for Robin's uh, Dojo channel. And, uh, and the and, beginner and jump is, on this thing. The beginner is also he has access to the intermediate too. They're not separate. That's right. They're you know, they're easily referenced by either you know the beginning or the intermediate student. That's right. And this is Robin's joint. This is so every artist has their own thing. They do whatever it is. They don't have to listen to us. <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, I, I we think just call you for help. <laughs> you do every <laughs> now and then. But uh, it's, um, and then click on Robin's uh, landing page, if you would, and show him that. There it is. Uh, Guitar Dojo, Guitar the Way I Learned It. It is, it, it, it's really phenomenal. Give it a go, 15 bucks. Um, I, I, I think it'll change your life. I mean, it's changing uh, mine, okay? There's a lot there. Um, also, you know, we've been working together now for a couple three years and i see a lot of questions here about chords and you know you did chord revolution where you dig deep into chords mm -hmm. and you know yes the mickey baker book is still a killer book i think i think after the last live when we talked about the mickey baker book yeah we're probably 
a thousand copies got sold over the next week. I've made week, that you know? them people a lot Absolutely. of money. Absolutely, but the book is killer. <laughs> but we've also done in Chord Revolution, um, you know, we did a Robin Ford chord vocabulary. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, you'll find a lot of the Mickey Baker chords in there, which are part of the jazz vocabulary. Yeah. But you'll find a, a lot of Well, Robins, a modern application. Modern application. We give it a modern application. Um, so another quick question or a couple of questions. Um, uh, Gabriel wants to know, if you have a pattern or an approach when it comes to writing songs, like... Do you start with chords? You know, because you just showed us like the yeah. minor 11th was the inspiration for Nazareth, yeah. which, by the way, is a song that you teach in Songcraft, That's another right. one of your That's courses. Right. Um, or do you start a different way or does it change? You know? Yeah. Well, I, I do find that um, mm, there, there's usually a chord there ahead or there's a chord there right at the beginning. Of the of you know if if the melody kind of comes, it generally has some kind of a harmonic quality to it uh, built in. If a melody comes to my mind, um, this thing you know that we just looked at, the way that was written, it's like okay, I'm going to write something in the Phrygian mode. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't think of myself as playing in the Phrygian mode like mm -hmm. ever. So it's like <laughs> right. all right. So Phrygian mode. By the mode. way, you, you should more often based on that tune. That's I'm going I'm to start. <laughs> so this song, it's B major. So I just started kind of, you know, working with the uh, the major thirds. And I just thought, rather than try to do something complex, and I always do this, it's like, I got a notion, and your, your first notion is it has to be something, like, difficult. This stuff is kind of difficult for me to play, but uh, in any case, I went to, I, I figured I'd write a, an R&B song. This could be, could be Al Green in the Phrygian mode, you know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, uh, I just sort of uh, fooled around with the chords. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, when I say chords, I mean the mode. I just use triads out of the mode, which is it's going to be B, you know, C sharp minor, etc. A harmonized major scale in the key of B. And um, that's how I worked. And uh, there's a beautiful E major 7 in it, you know, which has this kind of expansive quality to it. I break the mode just for a moment with that F minor 7 chord. And uh, again, just use the triads out of the uh, out of the Phrygian mode. In other words, uh, out of the B major scale. Can I get uh, that delay back, Tommy? I don't hear it at all now. So I remember um, uh, whether I'm not sure if it was a course or dinner, or whatever. But you were talking about you were you were driving back home when you lived on the West Coast. Robin mm -hmm. now lives in Nashville, which yeah. is very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you were driving north and you were looking at the countryside and this line green grass rainwater yeah. came to you yeah so do you ever have a lyric that comes to your head and then you write the music around the lyric well um like for instance that song green grass and rainwater uh indeed i'd been i, I very much like uh there's a a song written by Robbie Robertson called Broken Arrow. Mm -hmm. When I played with Phil Esch, we, we played it on the road with him. Mm -hmm. Who else is going to bring you a broken arrow? Who <laughs> else is going to bring you a bottle of rain mm -hmm. when you're gone? Yeah. It's like, I just really liked that. Yeah. You know, there's something about that. It's like, I wish I could write a song like that, uh -huh. honestly, yeah. with th that kind of imagery. Yeah. 
And yeah, I was driving north uh, to visit my family up in Northern California. I came by this pasture land, and it was very green, and there were horses out there, you know. And I just thought, to the horses, I just thought, I wish you green grass and rainwater. <laughs> and I'm like, there's my song, <laughs> green grass and rainwater, That's you know. Great. So it, a couple of steps to get to simply the chorus, yeah. you know. I wish you green grass and rainwater, so mm -hmm. I wish you well. You know. And a window taking light from the east. Providence, your umbrella be. Now let your dog run free. Beautiful right. lines, man. Yeah. It's really, like, really nice. you know, I wish you the best, but I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Love it. Uh, another question. Um, from Martin Diehouse. Um, I remember you telling me you write a lot of your songs on acoustic guitar, right? The lyric songs, yes. Yep. Uh, so when you play more of a jazz approach, mm -hmm. do you start with acoustic guitar or arch top rather than electric? Is there anything you would change, consider, or approach differently yeah. when you're writing jazz, more yeah. of a jazzy thing? Yeah. Talk to that. I wrote all of the music for this, uh, well, the five songs from the record mm -hmm. with Bill Evans were all written on uh, the Epiphone Riviera, which I didn't bring with me on this trip. I, I would have, but... It, uh, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar is not heavy, but it's cumbersome. You can't yeah. take it on your back. Yeah. And so I brought the telly, which yeah. has a similar kind of woody, you know, sound. But yes, I, I use the my Epiphone Riviera. The arch top, I'm not comfortable with big body guitars. I don't mm -hmm. like the way they meet my right arm. Right. Just how you get around them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just big, you know, so that, that Epiphone Riviera, which is, you know, very akin to a 335, mm -hmm. but it has the mini humbuckers, and they have that hollow, woody sound, which mm -hmm. I, I associate with a little bit more with the jazz sound, mm -hmm. and um, and also the kind of blues sound that I like, you know. Mm -hmm. So indeed, your instrument does, you know, uh, um, or I should say, can. I guess mm -hmm. it doesn't have to, but you know, like if I want to play some blues, I get the telly. Mm -hmm. If I want to play something more jazzy, I will get the Epiphone Riviera. Mm -hmm. If I want to play something, you know, more, uh, you know, rock and aggressive, or I need to be able to play faster, I'll play a Les Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, those are basically the three guitars for me, and their applications. You know, mm -hmm. cool. Um, by the way, we have a winner. Guitar seventy eight won the hundred dollar gift card. Your account will be credited. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to everyone for performing. Participating, everyone that participated is getting 50 entries in this PRS drawing. Um, but tell everyone about your Nashville based record label and what you're doing there. Well, indeed, uh, its um, name is. Oh, the name of the record company is 13J Records. And um, it's also 13J Productions at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I've produced. Uh, well, I've produced three records in the last three months, mm -hmm. but one of them was the Bill Evans record, and that's uh, our, my European label that, that put out uh, Purple House, mm -hmm. released Purple House. So um, the, uh, the first of the, of the three uh, was on a young guitarist named Daniel Donato, and anybody who follows my Instagram will see Daniel popping up there all over the place. Mm -hmm. But he pops up everywhere. <laughs> he's uh, is a very talented young uh, guitarist and mm -hmm. songwriter. Got a great band. They're mm -hmm. on tour right now mm -hmm. in the U.S. Daniel Donato. He calls his music cosmic country. Mm -hmm. He's very country, uh, you know, but also rock. You know, he's kind of there's sort of some Grateful Dead influence in there, and very much like the really good kind of country songwriter people. Mm -hmm. People like Rodney Crowell, you know, yeah. where it's not just country. Right. And uh, very versatile and an incredibly good, you know, uh, guitar player. So I produced Daniel, and I'm just finishing uh, a record on John Jorgensen, who's wow. particularly well known for his oh, yeah. gypsy jazz and also uh, bluegrass. Yeah. But what he plays anything. It, it, in uh, the album, is it gypsy jazz or bluegrass or? Yes. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> he does yeah. his thing. Right? Yeah, it's in three modes. Like yeah. uh, there's a gypsy jazz. Yeah. 
session. We recorded three different days. Yeah. Each day was different. Gypsy jazz, uh, the sort of compositional one that's sort of a combination of things, and then uh, a bluegrass day as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the record's kind of in three pieces. Three Is parts. he playing a mandolin on the bluegrass or guitar? He's playing guitar only. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think he plays clarinet on one song. Oh, but he is a clarinet player, that's right. But the other players on the record, Sam Bush is on the record, uh. Uh, also um, Rory Hoffman, uh, yeah. who's a brilliant blind uh, musician who mm -hmm. plays piano, accordion, mm. guitar, lap steel. <laughs> I think he plays some kind of a woodwind. Just an amazingly good musician. Just a whole bunch of really great players. So it's chock full. And uh, I've, I'm developing this relationship with uh, Compass Records. So in some cases, my productions will come out as 13J Productions on Compass. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it'll be uh, 13, 13 J Records distributed by Compass. Very cool. But I'm also I'm doing Paul Franklin in May. Mm-hmm. And I actually hope to be producing my own records on my label. Very nice. Very man. soon. You love producing. I remember you talking about this. It's, it's my favorite chair. Yeah, it is, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Well, congratulations on that, man. Thank You've you. really uh, you got incredible traction happening in psh, no time at all, really. Pretty quickly. And these projects you've got coming up, I think, are going to be monsters. So yeah. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Let's play one more tune. How about Samuel? Okay. Um, and then we'll talk about gear a little bit. All right. Too much delay now. Split the difference. anything from that <laughs> anything <laughs> well anybody familiar with my uh, first album um, might have recognized that series of chords as uh, I think I mentioned it it's the uh, it's the solo chord progression uh, from a song called Magic Sam uh, Russell Ferrante took the solo on the record but I like to use it here 
So it's uh, this uh, A flat, seven flat five to G minor 11 to F, alt F sharp altered, G over A to uh, A B flat. C sharp major seven flat five, C minor eleven, hard to know what exactly to say. lesson yeah. uh, the uh, first chord is um, you know your basic altered scale well it's not exactly your basic altered scale but this is where my lack of education comes in So it's basically A flat seven with a raised mm -hmm. fourth, or okay. yeah, uh, which acts as a five chord to get you to G minor, things like that. Altered scales, you know, it's basically a series of chords, and I, I go into depth about how I use them. Yeah, e every there are ten tracks uh, in, in this project, Jazz Revolution, ten tracks. On every track, um, there's uh, usually a, a, a pass on soloing and a lesson on soloing, a pass, you know, performance on uh, comping mm -hmm. and a lesson on comping. And um, with all other little bits of tips and insight along the way, everything's transcribed, every note, every chord. Um, this will keep you busy in the shed for a very, very long time. Pick it up on pre-order. Save yourself some bucks. Um, somebody asked if we were going to fast track this. The answer is yes. We're going to get this out to you as quickly as possible. All right. Um, it, give them a quick rundown on the telly, folks. You know, string gauge, what okay. pick you use. You know, the usual stuff. <laughs> sure. Well, this is a 1960 Telecaster. Uh, it is all original, uh, although this rhythm pickup here was rewound by Lindy Freeland. Really? Who did a great job, yeah. Nice. It's not quite as loud as it was mm -hmm. uh, when it was in its original state, but this mm -hmm. happened a long time ago. Anybody who knows me through this Telecaster has pretty much heard me with this pickup rewound mm. uh, by Lindy. I think that happened in like 93, Wow. something like that. Um, and of course, refret it. I put new uh, tuners on it because, you know, it's 1960, so some of these things were kind of bent and out of shape. Uh, other than that, the guitar is all original. And we even put some pictures up on Instagram <laughs> showing the guitar when I it was saw spotless. That. I saw it. You know, now <laughs> it looks like this. <laughs> yeah. So put some miles on this, baby. Yeah, well, we love that, you know. So, uh,. Yeah, that's the guitar. And string gauge usually. I use uh, Diodario 10s. I've been using Diodario 10s kay. since Hector was a pup. Okay. And they're asking about. In his first life. Your your pick, uh, heavy, medium. Yeah, I use uh, basically Fender Heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, uh, picks are uh, not very sturdy. Uh, the, the materials don't seem so good. I go through a pack of these things in about two days. Really? For real, I, I dis, I'm discarding them quickly. It'd be great if somebody came up with a pick that actually was made um, with, I think, more quality ingredients. I like them to be glassy feeling, but this is your standard, you know. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have anything to throw out to the audience, right? Oh, just a better pick. <laughs> a better pick, there you <laughs> go. Um, Robin, thank you. We, we were, and, and thank you to everyone that's you know, 
tuned in here, we ran about a half an hour over. Yeah. But everyone was digging it. Um, and we got a lot of great answers to a lot of great questions. Um, please check out the channel. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing I want you to check out is check out this new channel. I think it'll blow you away. Um, this course is, you know, I, I would say there's a lot of really good stuff in your library. If I had to pick two courses, I'd have to pick three. Chord Revolution, Blues Revolution, the first one, then Chord Revolution, mm -hmm. and then absolutely this one. If you really want to capture you know, how, how Robin approaches playing and kind of what he's thinking about um, and cop some killer lines, these would be the courses to pick up. And he, uh, what other courses? What would you recommend somebody to pick up in your True Fire library? Well, indeed. The chordal thing, I, I think, is just essential. There are a lot of people who already have that, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you don't really have chords under your belt, I would say Gotta chord... Gotta go there. Huh? That chorus, right? The chord revolution? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I would have to say. Yeah. A chord revolution, I think, is what the Mickey Baker book was to you. Yeah. Chord revolution kind of updated with the video and, the, oh. you know... Yeah. Is... In, in terms of presentation, it's... It's it's, it's killer. It goes past the Mickey Baker. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've done a ton of stuff on songwriting for, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing a lot of singer-songwriter content now, and mm -hmm. Robin has a couple, three courses that I think would be very useful if you're, if you're writing your own material. Yeah, anyway. The, the Purple House record, you know, oh that man, one. Oh, man, killer. That was the last one. We, we yeah. just launched that. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. Um, that came out fantastic. Uh, so thank you for staying with us an extra half an hour or so. Sure. Um, we all very much appreciate it. And uh, Tommy, if, if you wouldn't mind, Robin, just play us out. Philly Blues. Yeah. And sure thing. thank you all for tuning in. Back to the overdrive. All right. <laughs>